Hey, it's Sedlow. Just wanted to apologize. The previous version of this video had a pretty big screw up on my part. I said that the cockpit parameters for the UHF radio was UHF underscore freak. I was thinking of another airplane. It is actually com underscore freak, C O M M underscore F R E Q, capital letters. Apologize for that. I'm re-uploading this video and there will be a correction in there. Thanks. Take care. Sorry about that. Bye. Good day. Eh? My name is Sedlow and today I'm going to show you a little bit about using the mission editor for the DCS Heapler F4E Phantom. All right, here we are in the mission editor, and I thought we'd go through the mission editor tabs on the F4 from uh, left to right and just go that way. I've got a flight of four F4s I've plunked down here on Nellis Air Force Base. Adding waypoints is just the same as you would any other uh, aircraft. You can put as many as you'd like, really, all over the map, have it come back to land, no problem. The issue is that inside the F4, you can only have two waypoints in the navigation computer at a time. If you're flying with Jester, it's not a problem at all. Basically, uh, you fly out to waypoint one, and as you get there, you will put in waypoint two as your next point. You get close to waypoint two, it'll put in waypoint three, and so on. You can follow it that way. The other thing you can do is, in-game, you can favorite to any of these at any time via the jester wheel. I'll show you how that's done. All right, we're in the game. We're on the ground, I know, but you basically open the jester wheel, navigation, go to resume, and you have your waypoints there. And at any time you can select them and jester will navigate towards them. So yeah, See how that works? Pretty easy. I'm going to show you another thing about the navigation menu. You can at any time go and uh, set a hold and basically you will navigate, the gesture will keep you on course to that steer point and at that point it will not skip to the next steer point, it will just hold it there and then you do your hold and when you're ready to go again you can just tell them to resume. Go to waypoint 6. All right, there's another thing here in terms of uh, di diversion. See, divert to, and you can either put in a lat long, you can uh, divert to say waypoint number nine. It'll put it into number nine. It's the same as go to, but here, look at this. Divert to map markers. We don't have any map markers here except for the bullseye, but I'll show you how to do that in the mission editor. Let's go. All right, back in the mission editor, and as you saw, you can have Jester navigate towards a map marker. Uh, if you don't know how to make a map marker, it's pretty easy. You're basically going to put down a trigger zone. Let's uh, put one down here, and we're going to call this Hoover Dam. All right, look at that. And Hoover Dam map markers here. Let's just put down another one. Um, we'll put it out. Uh, in uh, Pahrump, I don't know how exactly you say that, say Art Bell's house. Okay, some of you may know who he is. I hope so. Anyway, so you have trigger zones here. In order to get them in the game, let's uh, go into our triggers. Mission start, we're going to go map marker to all, map, or sorry, mark to all. We've got uh, Art Bell's house, number 10. We're gonna say Art Bell's house, and um, I always just like to have this all three at the same time. Don't know why, but I do. Let's just clone this. We're going to change the value to 11. We're going to call this one uh, Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, sorry, J. Edgar. Call that Hoover, and then Dam. So uh, basically this is going to make these map markers visible to everyone at the mission start. These map markers have to be visual or uh, being able to seen by the player in order for Jester to be able to navigate towards it. 
All right, so let's just save that. We'll jump into the game and I'll just show you how to use that real quick here. All right, here we go. So again, bring up the gesture menu, navigation, divert to, you could say map markers. And look at that, there's Art Bell's house and there's Hoover Dam. So it's just another way you can do um, some mission editor stuff to uh, come alive in the game. And as you can see in the game here, you can also navigate towards airports and then assets. If you had like a tanker there, uh, it would show up. All right, let's go back into the mission editor. All right, back in the ME, the next tab over is the paint and loadout tab. Uh, Heepler has included a ton of preset weapons loadouts for just about every single task you have, which is awesome. Uh, of course, you can edit those, make your own whatever. The coolest thing, I think, though, is the uh, fuel tanks. You can add empty fuel tanks. Uh, remember the Razbam uh, Harrier was, uh, had this as well. Um, but the F4, you say, whenever it had fuel tanks fitted, they were full. Yeah, that's true. But say you want to simulate a uh, air-to-air refueling mission, you can put empty tanks on there to fill them up, give you some practice on the boom, or you can, say, do an airborne start just before the push or somewhere within the combat area, and you want the tanks on, but to have them empty, you can do it. It's awesome. Here's another cool thing. Uh, as you know, there's a ton of liveries that are included with the uh, F4. Heepler has decided not to restrict that via country, so you can have, say, Russian F4 and still pick any of those loadouts or any of those paint schemes. Um, why would you do that? Flexibility. Um, Heepler has given the mission editor uh, a lot of flexibility. You can do fictional scenarios, or um, you don't have to mess around with coalitions if uh, only this paint is for the Greek one. Uh, you have to add a Greek uh, coalition or Greek country to your coalition, whatever. Um, you don't have to do that. It's nice and simple and flexible, and we do appreciate it. Next tab over, triggered actions. Just the same as any other uh, aircraft. I'm going to come back to this because I'm going to show you a little trick in just a sec. Next tab over, you're en route, same as any other uh, aircraft. Navigation targeting points here. Um, on release, this is not going to be functional for the F4, but later in early access, this is going to play a big, big role in your mission editing. So we'll get back to that later on um, with a video in the future. The next tab over is something I am very, very impressed with. It's the failures tab. Okay, every aircraft has this, but on release, look how many failures you can trigger. Oh, this is probably the most extensive failure library in any aircraft that I can think of right now in DCS, and this is available at launch. There's some aircraft out there that have launched a while ago that don't even have this. So, yes, this is good. Um, all right, here's the little trick I'm going to show you. Say you want to trigger a left engine fire. You can do that. Um, the most granular you can do is 100% chance within one minute. I've asked ED to uh, let us be a little more precise with this, I'd like to have it happen instantly or within five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever this hasn't changed. This is the lowest amount you can do. Or is it? Check this out. Let's go back to the um, mission editor here. We can do a trigger. Say, I want to make a trigger that after 10 seconds, we're going to go set failure. And so look, it's the same sort of um, set up as the uh, failures tab right engine fire 100 percent possibility within one minute watch this so point one and it works so this will happen within point one of a minute which i guess is within six seconds you're going to have a right engine failure Sorry, within six seconds of this 10 seconds. So anywhere from 10 to 16 seconds, this will happen. And you can make it just about instant by going like that. 
How about that? Um, this has been in the Emmy for a while, but uh, I'm finding a lot of people don't know they can do it this way, and there you go. You can do it this way. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, the next tab over is um, basically you can add values to your waypoints here. I don't know what this does. I'm sorry, I've been mission making a long time. I don't know what it does. It's not mentioned in the manual. Um, it's a DCS thing that I think is going to come into play a little later on. So let's go to the comms. Now, as you know, I love communications in my missions. I think it's great. A um, couple things. The uh, parameter for the UHF radio is uh, a underscore freak freq if you want to do things in the uh, triggers with that uh, the uhf radio goes from 225 decimal zero megahertz all the way up to 399 decimal nine five megahertz they're in uh, 25 um, kilohertz steps and you can add frequencies there the other radio here is an aux radio it is basically a receive only radio so it's a radio scanner kind of it doesn't scan but it's a radio receiver here's a fun fact for you the range of this one although it's in the uhf spectrum is limited to 265 decimal zero up to 284 decimal nine megahertz uh, you're wondering why you can't type in 319.2 and it just defaults to that that's why this is a crystal controlled radio all right um it's this was preset on the ground long ago each squadron or wing had identical presets for the most case um what you'd find here is you'd find like an airfield ATIS, the squadron common freak, maybe a couple tack channels, uh, command posts might be here as well. So um, that's what the aux radio is for. It's receive only. If you want to sit you're sitting on the ground, you want to hear the ATIS, you can turn that on uh, to whatever channel. Set that up in the mission editor. Okay, the next tab is here. Aircraft condition, aircraft wear and tear. Okay, so right now, aircraft condition is 100, wear and tear is zero. It's a factory fresh aircraft that everything is operating within parameters. All right, it's by the book. This is a textbook example of an F4. And if you select that, that just guarantees that. Now say what if you want an uh, aircraft wear and tear of 50 and an aircraft condition of 50 what is that going to do for you well um, what that's going to do is simulate wear and tear um, things are not going to be broken but things will not be operating up to the manual um, say you have a uh, landing gear comes out at a certain rate if you adjust these numbers, well, the landing gear may come out at a different rate. Uh, it may be a little slower, maybe a little faster. It's just not going to be by the book. Um, doesn't mean it's a bad aircraft. It means it's just every aircraft has its little quirks, and an F-4 being an old aircraft uh, works a little differently uh, between each model. Just as, say, uh, two Toyota Corollas won't be exactly the same after 20 years, right? So that's what that is. Um, INS reference alignment stored. If you want stored heading ability um, when you're uh, cold starting the aircraft, uh, selecting this will enable a, a, a stored heading alignment which takes uh, much less time than a full alignment. Full alignment taking about eight minutes or so. Allow night vision goggles. Uh, although F4Es in the USAF and uh, USN did not have night vision capability, um, Heepler has given us flexibility in adding them. Okay, so that's great. TACAN channel preset, you can preset the TACAN so it spawns at a certain thing. Same with the VOR ILS, which is good. Uh, you can select the encryption key for the KY-28. This is uh, in a single player mission, not really relevant. 
but in multiplayer uh, using TCS VoIP or SRS, um, you can pre-select your encryption key, which is cool. Chaff double dispense, well, it's going to dispense from here and here instead of just one or the other. Okay. Uh, mode two, first digits, second digit, third digit, four digit. Um, it's a mode two, mode three transponder, um, commonly assigned by air traffic control. You can set this to whatever you want, say 1200 for a VFR flight. Um, it's just, it's you can spawn the aircraft preset squawking a certain thing. In a single player mission, it, um, it's just buttons to press. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you're playing multiplayer online, say with lot ATC, this is where it comes into um, good use. You know, make sure everyone in the flight has a different transponder code. You could be 1201, your wingman could be 1202, whatever. And uh, laser codes, you can preset the laser codes here. Um, fun fact, you can also change them in-game when you're on the ground via the gesture menu. Okay, there you go. That's all I've got for you for now. Um, it's a lot of me talking. I hope this was helpful. I want to see some cool missions from you guys. Um, the DCS F4 is basically a dream aircraft for me. Um, you're going to see a lot of content featuring the F4 for me in the future. All right, that's all I've got. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.